Hello guys, Chris here and welcome back to another Sunday video. In this one, my friends, I am very happy because I just bought the GTX 980 Ti. And it's a reference cooler. Oh boy, it's amazing. <laughs> I don't know, there's something about the GTX 980 Ti that I just truly love. I've had it for like a year, back in 2017, I think. And then I sold it for 280 euros to buy a GTX 1080 at 300 bucks. And I was really sad ever since because... I couldn't get my hands on a 980 Ti again for a decent price, but it finally happened. Oh yes. <laughs> so let's start by going through its specs. The 980 Ti released in 2015, so it's eight years old at this point. It's based on the Maxwell architecture. It has 2816 CUDA cores, six gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, and a buzz width of 384 bits. It supports DirectX 12 feature level 1, it still supports the latest drivers, although the latest games aren't really optimized with these GPUs in mind, and it consumes 250 watts of power, which was a lot back in 2015, but now in 2023, well, that's, that's mid-range, right? 250 watts, it's, it's not a high end anymore, you know? <laughs> oh yes, and I almost forgot, it released at 649 US dollars MSRP, when you could get a proper high-end GPU for 650 dollars. Those were the days. Basically, the 980 Ti was my dream card back in 2015, and I can't believe it's been that long, and I can't believe this thing is now regarded as a really old GPU. I, I We're all getting super old, I, I just don't know where are those years going? I, anyway, <laughs> I know where I'm going into the first game. Let's get to it, shall we? All right, let's go over the PC specs first. We got the GTX 980 Ti installed, obviously, <laughs> with the latest NVIDIA drivers. I did overclock it. This is what I applied over here in MSI Afterburner, by the way, for it to run at 1354 megahertz on the core clock. Over in Tech Power Ups GPU Z, you can see all of the GPU specs again. And finally, on the left, we're pairing it with a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D and 32 gigabytes of RAM to avoid CPU bottlenecks. Let's get into The Last of Us Part 1 now. Let's go over the settings. I'm playing at 1080p resolution with FSR 2 set to quality and that makes it 720p internally, but then it upscales it, of course. It looks nowhere near 720p. And we're using the medium settings preset with the low shadows. I needed to lower the shadow quality a little bit to achieve 30 plus 100 percent of the time um, but other than that everything else is on medium okay i'm gonna start counting our fps this first part of my benchmark run isn't really that intensive uh, but it's getting pretty decent frames per second actually like 50s sometimes 40s the overclock does make a huge difference for reference, at stock speeds, in this area right here, I saw a minimum of 33 frames per second, and now we're getting 40. What? Are you crazy? What? That is huge. These cards overclock really well, guys. Maxwell was a great architecture for overclocking. Now, thankfully, the game has been fixed and it doesn't stutter whatsoever. Those frame times are buttery, buttery smooth. So you can lock it to like 40 frames per second or maybe even 30 frames per second and have a smooth ish experience throughout the entire game this is one of the most intensive areas uh, but we will get to the most intensive area in just a little bit fsr2 also doesn't look terrible in this game but there is quite a bit of noise uh, unfortunately if you disable fsr it will dip into the high 20s in the most intensive parts i really recommend you to enable it anyways even if it doesn't look the best i'm just really surprised to see no stuttering issues whatsoever on a 6 gigabyte card. This wasn't the case when the game came out. Over here is the most intensive part, it's getting 36 frames per second. Without the overclock, it was dipping into the low 30s, like 31, 32, through, through. <laughs> 
32, but yeah, it, it does make a huge difference. You can lock it to 30 and have a last-gen console-like experience, basically. It feels great over here. Next is another big hitter, Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p using the medium settings preset, but I disabled FSR, which comes on by default, as well as motion blur. Everything else is left as is on the preset. Crowd density is also set to high. Let's go. It's looking really good at medium settings, actually. I forgot how good this game looks on medium, like what the hell? I usually play on high or higher on high-end GPUs, but medium does look very impressive still, not gonna lie. And it is getting around 40 plus frames per second, which is okay. You know, I kind of expected a little bit better coming from a 980 Ti, Jesus. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's okay, it, it doesn't really bother me too much the FPS that we're getting and being a single player title I, I think I would be fine with this experience come over here Bob I will kill you you bitch nope get out there we go we got Bob now finally let's go back to the car and continue our benchmark run. <laughs> also I forgot to show you but we are using the high textures in this game and it's only utilizing around 5.1 gigabytes of VRAM so 6 gigs is definitely enough for Cyberpunk 2077 on medium and in this game the FPS don't really fluctuate weight by all that much so you can expect like 35 plus fps all of the time i mean with these graphics and these fps i will say it's a pretty nice experience with the 980 ti now what if you want to get closer to those 60 frames per second is it possible with the help of fsr unfortunately the latest version of it has a lot of ghosting <laughs> <laughs> behind the car as you can clearly see there probably but if you don't mind that and if you wait for them to fix it i'm sure they will fix it at some point because it wasn't like this previously you can get much closer to those 60 frames and even hit 60 fps sometimes it's not gonna be all of the time and i really don't recommend you to use anything below quality fsr at native 1080p well at, at the 1080p resolution um but yeah it's it provides a much smoother and more stable experience in my opinion over here it's dropping into the mid 50s look at that guys we even managed 59 frames per second on average that's quite decent right now it's Apex Legends and we are playing this one at the 1080p resolution using low settings with high textures and high model detail. With these settings I'm aiming for a more competitive like experience, you know, achieving the highest FPS possible while still making the game look decent with those textures, you know. And looking at the entire uh, map, well not the entire map anymore <laughs> from above, it was getting like 90 frames per second to 100 at times which is quite nice. But of course, we all know that uh, this drops tremendously whenever there are ultimates and stuff like that going on. Now, these FPS are super nice. <laughs> so the 980 Ti apparently, most of the time at least here in Apex Legends, is capable of a high refresh rate experience. I really need to be careful because I'm playing alone versus squads. Oh boy. It's not being very careful, <laughs> is it? Uh, let's throw a grenade there. Where are them bastards, guys? Throw smoke as well, just to see the FPS. Ooh, the grenade actually hit somebody there. This is really smooth, by the way. VRAM usage is totally under control. I only used the high setting there, which should use less than four gigabytes of VRAM. And look at that power utilization. This is supposedly a 250 watt card. But the Maxwell architecture is showing some really good efficiency here in Apex Legends, as well as in the last couple of games that we tested. Okay, here we go, guys. Here we go. I'm going to throw this out. I really want to see what kind of FPS we get around these explosions from my ultimate. This usually gets super intensive, okay? It barely drops. Like, I mean, it's a huge drop, yes, but... It's very good, the performance still, dropping into the 90s only. There's a guy. Oh, hello there. Okay, okay, wait a second, let me reload this. Buddy, come over here now, again, come on. Buddy, what are you doing? Oh boy, he has friends, obviously. Come on, oh, oh damn it. <laughs> well, that was nice, guys, the performance is amazing in Apex. Damn. 
Okay, okay, this is not terrible, but I was expecting better. It's Call of Duty Warzone 2, by the way, and we're playing it at 1080p using the minimum settings preset with normal textures here, which seem to be enough for 6 gigabytes of VRAM. All right, so in the... Oh boy, that was close. <laughs> in the warm-up, we were seeing like around 100 frames per second because we were in a different area. This one, however, because it has a lot of water around it, it drops a lot as you can see into the 70s even so uh, this is what you can expect with the 980 ti i was thinking this would do a little bit better of a job maybe 100 fps on average oh boy it drops into the low 60s when you touch water guys so you might want to avoid areas with a lot of water like this one no way like this is all due to it being old and the game not being optimized to take advantage of old architectures basically now, can you enjoy the experience in Warzone still with the 980 Ti? Well, yes, you can, as long as you keep things on low with normal textures, if you want a little bit better visuals, uh, it's, it's gonna be fine. I'll say that overall it's a good experience, you can play it without any issues whatsoever. It just sucks to see that it is sucking this much power and only capable of achieving 81 FPS on average uh, with minimums of 60 flat or like 61, whatever it was. We also have the option of using some FSR2 in this game, which looks decent on quality. The vegetation areas will look a little bit bad, like over there for example, that's a lot of noise noise, the trees as well, uh, but it's good to achieve like 10 more frames per second. It's not a huge improvement whenever you enable FSR with the 980 Ti in some games, because once again, it's an old GPU, old architecture, the drivers, well, it still supports the latest ones, but they're not really optimized towards the 900 series anymore, and uh, this is what you get. I myself think I would probably enable FSR just to make sure that it stays 100% above 60, so it will do for a much smoother experience, especially if you plan on not locking those FPS. Okay, this is where we see the true power of the GTX 980 Ti. GTA 5 is an older title, of course, we're playing it at 1440p using very high settings, my custom settings basically, grass quality set to high instead of the maximum, post effects is set to normal because I don't like the look of it, it introduces motion blur whenever it's set to high or higher, and over here everything is turned off, and you can see right away that that power usage is up there, finally! It is utilizing the proper amount of watts for a 980 Ti because it is optimized to run this game very well. Actually, GTA 5 came out on PC at roughly the same time as the GTX 980 Ti and it was very capable of playing it back then uh, at 4K resolution. So 1440p is good for a high refresh rate experience as you can see. But yeah, this just shows you that this was an insane GPU back when it released, right? To be able to play a AAA title as big as GTA 5. Yeah, it's really well optimized, but the 980 Ti was a beast of a card back then, and it was on my wish list for a long time. <laughs> now, where GTA 5 struggles the most with FPS and performance is near grassy areas like this one, so we should be seeing the FPS going lower, okay. Still, it's only dropping into the lower 100s, higher 90s, maybe low 90s at times, worst case scenario. That's really good performance. Hello, Jack, how's it going? Good to see you, buddy. Let's go down here now. Inside of these bushes, it's usually super intensive. And it's only dropping into the lower 90s again. Like, this is a flawless, completely flawless experience. Oh boy, we're playing Battlefield 2042 now, guys, at 1080p medium settings. I'm gonna show it to you in just a, a little bit. <laughs> it's broken, Phil. <laughs> Here we go, 1920 by 1080, medium settings preset. Whoa, no, no, this is not the way. This is not the way I wanted to go. Oh my gosh, I am so muddy right now. Look at that, the dirt all over me. I'm gonna try to revive you. Hopefully I won't die. There we go. I'm a good teammate, see guys? I know how to play this game. <laughs> Got a kill there. Alright, there's another guy right there. 
Okay, another kill. Good stuff. Oh, there's Jack, by the way. Hello, Jack. How's it going? Let's push a little bit. Oh, a little bit of a stutter there. Why did that happen? It was going so smoothly. Let's see if I can find anybody else. There's one there. Good, good, good. I like this game, guys. You know, when it came out, it was a complete mess, but now it's been fixed. It runs well. 980 Ti is very capable here, and I'm having fun. I see one in the map. He's right here. Yeah, there he is. Okay, there we go. All right, it seems like it is a pretty solid experience here in Battlefield 2042, even though this is a really intensive title, especially for older architectures. Kepler doesn't even support it, so Maxwell is the oldest architecture that supports this game. Uh-oh. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh oh, oh. I'm, I'm gone, I'm out of here. <laughs> that was close, that was really close. Hello there, what the hell are you doing? They're everywhere. Next up is the easiest game to run on Earth, Valorant. 2160p or 4K resolution using the high settings with MSAA on two times. And it uh, it's still getting above 200 frames per second, guys. This is just, this is really easy to run. You can run this on a potato. Even the 710 runs it at 1080p comfortably. So no wonder the 980 Ti is actually capable of achieving super high FPS, even at 4K. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. I know I, I shouldn't really prone whenever I'm shooting, but it's years of experience in CSGO, and I just can't help it, all right? So I'm sorry if, if the gameplay is cringy sometimes. I've been told that it is, but uh, what matters is we winning, and we're in third place at the moment, so that's not too bad, damn bastard! <laughs> whoa, 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 couple of them? Oh, there we go. There we go. Also, going uh, crouch. I'm doing it. I am doing it. Makes it so that they can't really shoot at you. We got a pentakill. Are you serious? This is the power of the 980 Ti. Usually I struggle a lot in this game, guys. And yes, guys, if you are playing competitively with smoke effects and stuff like that, it will probably drop your FPS by a little bit, but... The feel of the game is going to be pretty much the same, and it feels absolutely fantastic here. No, we gotta get one more kill. One more kill. No! That's totally unfair, dude. At least we got 269 average at the end. It's really, like, amazing, as expected for Valorant, but it was at 4K. Next is Spider-Man Remastered. We're playing this one at the 1080p resolution using TAA and the high settings preset. Unfortunately, the game stutters a little bit using these settings because it's running out of VRAM, as you can see. It's maxed out at the moment. Um, but high settings look way better than medium settings in this game, so I really wanted to go for high in this one, my friends. All right, you can see that the frame time is not really flawless, but these stutters don't really happen that often, like that one over there. Um, so I, I would probably manage to live with it and uh, get around 60 frames per second on average and make the game look very pretty because if you lower the texture quality to medium you lose all of these reflections on the buildings and i think it makes a huge difference yeah right here it's starting to drop into the 50s lower 50s at times maybe wait a second there we go yeah 40s even so it's not gonna stay at around 60 fps all of the time, unfortunately. It can drop a lot when you're looking at the entire city from above. Over here, yep, 52 once again. But overall, it's an okay experience. It's time for the beautiful Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p, and you can actually use the ultra quality textures here, no problems. Uh, it's overall set to medium settings. Some things are on ultra, some things are on high, some things are on low. Uh, I just set it to the balanced preset and that's it. And as you can see, it is getting lower than 60 frames per second, but in a game like this, it doesn't really matter to get 60 plus all of the time, in my opinion. Of course, you could tweak a few settings here and there and achieve those 60 plus 100% of the time if you want to. But, uh, you know, it just looks great on balanced preset. It performs well. It has zero stutters whatsoever. <laughs> I actually hit my headphones there. And it looks stunning. 
Now, in areas with a lot of vegetation, things will usually drop here in Red Dead Redemption 2, and it is only lowering it down to the mid-50s, which is quite nice. The water areas are also a little bit intensive whenever you have the water physics set to a high value, which we don't right here, so it's absolutely fine. It doesn't really lower your FPS. Also, the VRAM usage is really low here at 1080p, guys. It's surprisingly low. Like, what the hell? I was expecting it at least to use 5 gigabytes on ultra textures, but no. Vegetation areas, not really dropping around here. 55, eh, it drops slightly. But it is so damn stable that it doesn't really move too much from around 55 to 60 frames. Now we're playing Fortnite Battle Royale with the Unreal Engine 5.1 at 1080p using DirectX 12 and the high settings preset but without the nanite virtualized geometry. This is getting 100 FPS here, that's pretty impressive. Not gonna lie, I was expecting worse. Remember, this is Unreal Engine 5.1, it's looking fantastic even without the nanite and ray tracing stuff. It can look really, really good Fortnite these days. And it's just running absolutely flawlessly. What is happening here? What is this? What the hell? Oh, I don't, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's just continue here. I went to see the FPS inside of bushes. Doesn't really drop too much. What? The, I'm just, I'm really confused right now. I have no clue what's happening. The, the, the earth is farting or whatever. <laughs> oh boy, super weird. Okay, let's uh, move out of here. See the sunset. Yeah, that's a very beautiful sight here in Fortnite for sure. And um, notice that it is not really stuttering too much. Usually I call this game Stutter Night, but in this one, it's pretty reasonable. The 1% lows are at 71. Ah, ah, oh, no, 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 no. What? Uh, what is happening? What, what am I using? What is this gun? Oh, hello there. Hello. No. I don't want anything to do with you, buddy. Thank you very much. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Ah, oh, damn it. All right, all right. It reminds me of the Titanfall pistol. God, no, not from behind. Okay, well. Now we're playing Hogwarts Legacy at 1080p using FSR2 on quality. And in this game, I just, I won't really test it at native resolution because it looks better with FSR. Down here, these are the settings. I turned all of these off. And over on the advanced graphics options, we're using the medium settings preset. And good news, my friends. I think it is very, very playable. Look at this. It's looking great on medium. Yes, high settings do look a heck of a lot better in terms of shadows and lighting than medium, but I, I like my 60 frames per second. <laughs> All right, guys. And uh, the 980 Ti doesn't seem to have any issues whatsoever producing 60 plus all of the time in Hogwarts Legacy with these settings. Also, no major stutters to speak of, which is very impressive with a 6 gigabyte card in a recent title like this one, especially a super intensive one. You gotta keep in mind, however, that if you don't have a beefy CPU or enough RAM to run this game, it's using 17 gigabytes at the moment, it will stutter a little bit more and it will actually drop FPS here in the Hogsmeade town. I've seen these comments hundreds of times probably saying that Hogsmeade is the most intensive area, but that's just for people who are CPU bound in this game. Otherwise, this area right here is a little bit more intensive. It starts to drop into the 60s as you can see but still not an issue for the GTX 980 Ti it's handling it like a champ over here it usually drops a little bit further and it only dropped to 62 frames per second great stuff next is Sons of the Forest at 1080p using the low settings not the lowest because some things can go lower still uh, and I set the texture resolution to quarter instead of the default eighth but uh, yeah yeah, this is low settings guys like it it doesn't look very good on low honestly on high it actually does look really decent this game but low shadows and low lighting are just terrible basically what oh boy we, we got some people jumping around in trees what the hell are you doing there you got clothes usually these guys don't have clothes 
All right, let's move on. 69 FPS on average. That's very good, but unfortunately, the game still stutters a little bit. VRAM usage is not maxed out at 5.2, 5.3 gigabytes there. And overall, the FPS are at what? Like 50 plus all of the time, maybe 55 plus or whatever. God damn stutters, man. They're so annoying. But the thing is... They will only happen when you have to load in the new areas and stuff like that. If we go back to where we came from, I doubt it will stutter as much, at least. It shouldn't really have those huge frame time spikes anymore. Uh, it could be worse. Medium settings gets us around like 50 frames per second, 50 to 60 most of the time. I'm actually gonna test that out, you know, why not? Let's go. Medium is now applied. We got screen space reflections. And there we go, 50 frames per second, as I was saying, that's what we get. It looks a little bit better, definitely. But honestly, guys, I was really expecting better coming out of the GTX 980 Ti. I thought it would be capable of getting 60 plus, at least on medium settings in 1080p resolution. But it isn't capable of doing that here. This game is also really intensive, so... There's that. Um, let's move on. At least it's playable. You can enjoy a little bit of Sons of the Forest. Okay, I can see the motion blur already. This is Elden Ring, and we're playing it at the 1080p medium settings. Let me just uh, find that pesky little option. There it is. Turn that crap off. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> it gets 60 FPS locked all of the time here in Elden Ring. Uh, GPU utilization gets really high up into the 80s right there. Even low 90s at times in this particular area with a lot of trees. So that means that in like 90, 95% of the game, it will stay locked at 60 FPS the entire time. You shouldn't really worry about FPS fluctuations here if you're playing at 1080p with the medium speed settings oh boy hello little friend how's it going agil come on come on come on come on there we go that's what i want to see some smoke oh, smoke <laughs> fire effects right there very good the gpu usage didn't really go down and did i say 90 to 95 percent of the game it will stay at 60 locked you know what i will dare to say it will stay locked at 60 98 percent of the time <laughs> <laughs> so just play this game, enjoy it with the 980 Ti, it still looks decent on medium settings, pretty good actually, uh, and it's, it's buttery smooth guys, alright. This is Dying Light 2, I literally just started and look at our FPS, that is very impressive isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Those FPS, well, they, they could be a little bit better, but the game is looking pretty damn good here at the 1080p resolution using no upscaling and the medium settings in DirectX 11. This is it. You could lower it down to low. It looks very similar, although lighting and emerald occlusion are a little bit worse looking on low settings. Um, and overall, you get less details, of course. But yeah, uh, if you want 60 plus at native res it will get that on low settings however i prefer to actually enable some fsr2 which looks very good when the sharpness is turned up to 100 in this game and it's actually a little bit sharper than native resolution and to my eyes at least it looks a little bit better in this game in particular not all games again will look better with fsr but this is another one of them um and I, I really like to use FSR in it. <laughs> Look at that lighting. That's really um, unnatural, <laughs> actually, at this point. <laughs> like, that looks really, really bright. Way too bright. Anyway, you can expect 60 plus FPS 100% of the time right now. And I think... That's absolutely beautiful with a 980 Ti. Yeah, it's a great experience. Medium settings look super similar to high settings in this one. So you're not really losing much by not playing on high. Also, I don't know if you noticed it, but we got zero stutters so far. That frame time is one of the smoothest that I've seen today, guys. 
It's awesome. Next is Overwatch 2 at 1080p native resolution and the Ultra Settings preset. And it's running really well. It's buttery smooth. I'm actually using the 120 hertz right now on the capture cards because we're playing at 1080p. And uh, it, I can feel all of those frames. It's it's just amazing. Game. Amazing. Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's go. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, let's do this. We gotta attack them bastards. Oh, look at all of these colors. That's looking great. <laughs> oh, no, no, don't, don't nerf that. Oh, there we go. Uh, no, I, I, I did a bad thing, didn't I, by pulling that? <laughs> you bastard diva. God damn. All right. You know what? Maybe we should just uh, get out of here. Yeah, I, I guess. Go attack the objective. No, uh, eat, 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 eat. You know what? If I can't get any golden medal, I will get the objective time golden medal. I don't even care. I am going to the objective. Nobody can stop me. Not even you, you bastards. There we go. I'm eating. <laughs> so, yeah, this is Overwatch 2 in total mayhem, by the way. So it's slightly more intensive. And now, oh, I, I thought, I thought I could do it, but no. We still have two eliminations in total. <laughs> All right, guys, this is CSGO right now, and uh, it's super easy to run. I actually made a little montage this time around. I'm not playing the game in real time at the moment. But yeah, I really wanted to include CSGO because a lot of people still love it and like me to include it in my videos. But of course, the 980 Ti doesn't have a problem whatsoever playing it. It is actually running at 4K using low settings and high textures. And obviously, if you want a more competitive experience, you could lower the resolution to 1440p, 1080p, even lower than that, and probably end up being CPU bound and achieving super high FPS, just like in Valorant, you know. Now, Rainbow Six Siege is running the benchmark run right now, and it's the same story as CSGO. This is 1440p with the high settings preset, and it's running above 100 frames per second pretty much at all times. Sometimes it might drop here and there, but you know, it's buttery smooth if you lower it down to low and play at lower resolution, it will be a super competitive experience. So the 980 Ti is still definitely a beast when it comes to these esports titles, even the ones that are a little bit more intensive uh, to run, like this one. And it is conclusion time, my friends. I got the bonus game running right here, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, that ran all right around 60 frames per second at 1080p high settings. It's pretty impressive, actually. Now, talking a little bit about the GTX 980 Ti, I, I am very sad to say this, but it's not a beastly card anymore. Like the GTX 1080 Ti, for example, I still consider that quite a bit of a beast, you know. This one, however, it was a tremendous GPU, really, really fast one back when it released in 2015. It was a very viable option for some years after that. But in 2023, it's eight years Old. I usually don't recommend GPUs this old, at least the higher end stuff. I could make the argument for like a 750 Ti, it consumes very little power and it's good for esports games only. So yeah, if you don't want AAA stuff, 750 Ti is really nice for like 30 bucks or lower, but this still costs 100 bucks plus. I actually bought mine for 120 euros and uh, it consumes a heck of a lot of power. <laughs> For the performance you get, well, it's not really that efficient anymore. You might be better off going for something else, like an RX 5700 XT. That's a really good GPU for around 150 bucks. It still performed pretty well in some games. It was disappointing in others, but uh, you know, for an eight year old GPU, it actually did pretty well overall, I think. Thanks very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you in the next one very soon. As always, love you all. Bye-bye.